Alrighty then. So we've been doing some work with blood drops when they fall straight to the ground where gravity is the only force acting on them. But what about other times? Because there are other forces that could be at work here. You could have blood that's being um, spewed from, um, if you're in a fist fight and you've got blood on your hands and you're, you swing at somebody and, and the blood is being flung all about the room, well, then there's some horizontal motion um, attached with that blood drop as well as the force of gravity pulling it down. Think about it this way. You know that when um, you throw a football or a baseball or you know serve a volleyball um, across the net, that the ball, there's an arc to it. So you can have blood flying through the air that has an arc to it. And when that blood drop that has both vertical forces acting on it, that would be gravity, and then horizontal forces acting on it, the being flung across the room, um, when that blood drop hits either a wall or a door or a floor or a table or a window, it's going to hit and then skid across that surface. And instead of a nice neat round circle that you get when a blood drop falls where gravity is the only force acting on it, you will get more of an elliptical shape. And so that's what we're going to talk about now. Because blood flying through the air obeys the same laws of gravity that a projectile would. And when it hits, um, we're going to use trigonometry to calculate what angle it hit at, which is horrible grammar. And you can actually use trigonometry and string to um, figure out where the uh, blood spatter came from, and we'll, that string thing we'll get to later. So when blood hits a surface at an angle, instead of being perfectly round, it has an oval or an elliptical shape to it. And this is an example of a blood drop that has hit at an angle. When you are measuring, because we're going to be doing some measuring in a minute, when you are measuring, a couple of things to remember. You do not measure the tail right here. The tail is not in included in the measurement of the length of the drop. And then the other thing that you have to keep in mind is that the when you're doing the measurement, this little bit right here, you're, you may or may not include that. You want to make sure that you round the... That's not a very good example. Thank you, trackpad. But you want to make sure you round the ellipse at the bottom the way it would be if there were not a tail attached. But we're going to be measuring the width and then the length. And when you look at this, and we are going to use trigonometry, but don't freak out. Don't be having a panic attack right now because I'm just going to show you what buttons to push on your calculator. When we're looking at it, and we want to figure out what angle that blood drop hit the wall or the floor or the table or the window from. Here we've got a stylized view of a blood drop where line segment AB is the width of the blood drop and line segment CD is the length of it. And notice there's no tail included in this. The tail does not count. Don't tell that to your doggy or your kitty. So the Greek letter theta is the symbol that is traditionally used for angle. So the angle of the impact of the blood drop is equal to the inverse sine of the width over the length. Okay. What this comes down to is, for you guys, accurate measurements and then knowing how to use your calculator. The width is not that hard to figure out. You've done that before. And let's say that in this particular example, the width is 10 millimeters and the length is 25 millimeters. And that's what we're going to use for our calculations. And I would like to um, just remind you you can't measure the width in millimeters and the length in centimeters. Make sure you're using the same um, measurements there. 
And uh, so you'll need a ruler to do this when we get to the practice pieces. So we've got a width of 10 and a length of 25. Well, how in the world do you figure out the inverse sine of this? Well, funny you should ask, because I went through and um, I've got instructions here for doing it either on your iPhone. If you have an Android phone, I'm sorry, you are on your own because I've never really used an Android phone and I don't want to. Um, so on an iPhone, open the app, turn the phone sideways to get the extended features. By the way, if, you, if I'm going too fast for you on this, this is the beautiful thing about video. You can pause it and you can go back and you can look at it. And our dog just came in from playing ball and you can probably hear him breathing and licking my face. That's him, not me. Oh my goodness. So if you turn your phone sideways and nothing happens, there's no changes, no extended features, um, you might have your um, rotation, screen rotation locked. And you can, um, if you don't know how to unlock that, let me know and I'll walk you through that. But you should have something that looks like this. Once you have this, um, you are going to, this is the easiest way that I found out to do it on the iPhone. You're going to do the width, 10 millimeters, divide it by the height, 25 millimeters, and get your result. So in that particular case, 10 divided by 25 is 0 0.4. From here, you're going to tap the second button, which on my little picture here is right there. And when you do that, it'll change the display on the left half of the screen. Um, so hit that second button a couple times and you can see how it toggles back and forth between the different types of displays. But you want it so that it looks like this. And where we're going with this is we're going to be using that right there inverse sign. So now hit that inverse sign button and that's all you have to do. So we went from it was remember the display before was 0 0.4 because it was 10 divided by 25. So when I started this it was 0 0.4 and all I did was I hit inverse sign and it gives me this correct answer. Now, if you look at this, that's a lot of decimal places. You don't need to have that many decimal places. You can just go to the hundredths place, which is two places to the right of the decimal. All right, if you have a calculator, a TI-84, um, I don't have screenshots of what it will look like, but I, I think I've got a pretty good um, description here of how to walk through it. And if you're not sure, again, you can let me know and um, we'll just do it off of this picture that I um, stole from Google. So first of all, obviously turn it on. Hit the second key, which is right there. Then you're going to hit the inverse sine key, which is right there. You'll see sine minus one is above the sine key in light blue. And hey, the second button is in light blue. So on your display, you're going to get something that looks like that. Um, inverse sign with the first, the left parenthesis bracket. Then you're going to put in your width divided by height. And if you want to close the parentheses, you can, but you do not have to. You can just hit the enter key and you should get the correct answer. So if you did get 23.58, yay, good for you. If you did not get 23.58, it's not necessarily that you did something wrong. It's probably because your calculator is set to radians instead of degrees. Um, some of you know what I'm talking about, some of you may not. But look in the display, and somewhere in the display, and I want to say it's in the upper right hand part, but I'm not 100% sure, It'll say RAD if it's in radians, and then if that's the case, you'll need to change, go into the menu and change it to degrees, which I don't have the um, directions for getting into the menu because I don't have a TI-84 handy to um, look at all the buttons and what to push. 
So if the degrees say, or if the display says your degrees and you're still not getting the right answer, let me know and you know maybe we can figure it out together. So the last thing that I want to do here is show you what it looks like um, when you have blood drops that hit a surface at an angle other than 90. Remember, at a 90 degree angle, that is perpendicular to the surface, you are going to get a Where's my cursor? There it is. At 90 degrees, you're going to get a perfect circle that looks like this. The spines will all be approximately the same length. If there are satellite spatter, it'll be approximately equal around the entire blood drop. Now, as you go further away from 90 degrees, closer to zero degrees, on 80 degrees, you can't really tell a whole lot of difference. But once you get to 70 degrees and definitely to 60 degrees, it's hard to see on here, but the spines on the top of the drop, and that is the top of the drop where it first hit, are shorter than the spines on the bottom of the drop. So that means that the blood drop was traveling down when it hit the vertical or hit the surface at 70 degrees of impact. And here at 60 degrees, you're really starting to see how it is a little bit more oval shape and a little less circular at 80 and even at 70, it still looks an awful lot like it's a perfect circle. And then 50 degrees, 40 degrees, and now here it's really getting elliptical. And in these last through last couple, the 10, the 20, even to 40 degrees is where you really have to be careful about your measurements and about making sure that you don't include the tail or that little bit that's dripping off the end that helps to make the tail. Um, I guess one last thing that I should say about doing the calculations, and this is a beautiful thing. If you can't remember if it's width divided by length or length divided by width, if you do it the wrong way, you will get an error message on your calculator. So if you had done 25 divided by 4 instead of 10 divided by 25, and then you tried to do the inverse sign thing, it would tell you that it can't complete the calculation. It would be an incorrect syntax um, or just get an error message and then you would go oh I must have put it in wrong and um, you can redo it then so um, there you go um, I will be back with you later I want you to try the homework that I'm sending you as well and um, we will talk soon have at it guys